It's good to see you all here tonight. Thank you for attending uh, this regular meeting of the Rockingham County Board of Commissioners. And we want to thank right off the bat uh, our good friends here in Eden for sharing their city hall with us. Uh, we look forward to using it in a very professional manner, but it's gracious of you. And uh, uh, we have people looking at the weather, so if something becomes dangerous, you'll know about it promptly. But uh, it's good to have you all in here. You don't look to have too much water on you. Uh, tonight, uh, we're fortunate again to have uh, Reverend Lance Cole from First Baptist Church in Reesville deliver our invocation if you would come forward. And as soon as he's done there, uh, Commissioner Hall will be introducing one of our young people uh, to give us a, a few words of wisdom uh, from the Boys and Girls Club and also to provide our Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would stand and remain standing until after the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Thank you. Let's pray together. Lord God, as we come before you here tonight, first of all, we are just so thankful for your care and your provision. Anytime we come into this type of venue, Lord, we are especially grateful for our freedoms and for the way in which you have cared for our country and our county and this city. So we do ask your continued blessing on that. Lord, I ask your blessing on those who are going to be delivering reports or these commissioners that you would give them wisdom and strength. Lord, that you would use them to serve you and to serve these people well. We thank you, as, as already mentioned, for the rain, uh, for the way in which you care for the earth. And I do just echo the sentiments and just pray for safety tonight. Uh, that you would allow uh, everyone to, to come to these proceedings as well as leave safely. And so do just ask for your, your watchful care over that. Be with each of us as we are here tonight listening, speaking, and help us to do so in a way that reflects graciously and lovingly on each other. And so it is with humble hearts and thankful souls that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. At this time, we'll welcome Ms. Nora Thacker. If you'll make your way up, she's going to say a few words about herself as way of introduction, and then she'll be delivering the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Thacker. Hello, my name is Nora Thacker. I have been selected by the Boys and Girls Club of Eden to attend Youth Voice 2023, a leadership conference sponsored by North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. This year's conference is being held in Raleigh at the end of this month. One of the requirements to attend is to introduce myself to the county commissioners, and that's why I'm here tonight. I'm a rising junior at Moorhead High School, and I have been a member of the Boys and Girls Club since I was four years old. The Boys and Girls Club has been a big part of my life, and I'm excited about the opportunity to meet new club members from around the state and learn new things. Thank you. Now face the flag. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Thacker. We appreciate it. And uh, it seems appropriate to... Uh, recognize the Boys and Girls Clubs of Eden because they're turning out such fine folks as Ms. Thacker there. So I, I suggest we applaud the Boys and Girls Clubs for the fine work that they do. <laughs> We're moving on to item four, uh, and this uh, is in regard to the approval of tonight's agenda. Do we have motions concerning the agenda? Mr. Chair, I do. If we could uh, add the following amendments, item 5G to the consent agenda uh, from our attorney approval, acceptance of offer to purchase real estate um, containing 0.92 acres of real property and, and a house located at 360 Pretty Loop Road in Stoneville, North Carolina, with the proceeds of the sale to be allocated to the Rockingham County Animal Shelter as directed by the will of Teresa R. Hubbard. In addition, we'd like to ask for item 5H to go on the consent agenda, Lindsay Pegg, 
from the Economic Development and Tourism Department. She's asking for approval to proceed with the Creating Outdoor Recreation Economies, CORE, program through adopted resolution and signed MOU. In addition to these two consent items, we're asking for the addition of item 8A, Felissa Farrell, Health and Human Service Director. She's asking for the approval of the addition of three income maintenance caseworkers positions due to the Medicaid expansion. And item 8B, Ronnie Tate, our Director of Engineering and Public Utilities. Tonight, he's seeking approval for the Board of Election parking lot repaving and Justice Center parking lot seal coating. Approval of triangle grading and paving as contractor for the amount of $224,964 plus a 5% contingency of $11,248, the total amount being $236,212. Funding for the project is in the existing budget for this year. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Hall. Uh, motion made, gentlemen, with the aforementioned adjustments. Do we have, when we have a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by the sound of aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. We now have an active agenda. And perhaps what most of you are most excited about, I know I am, uh, public comment. Consent. Consent. Do the consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Powell. Do I have a motion concerning the adjusted consent agenda? So moved. Moved? Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by the sound of aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. I actually thought we did that last time, but now we're on to uh, public comment. And uh, before we do public comment, I'm going to ask our county manager, Lance Metzler, to uh, give us the rules of engagement. Sure, Mr. Chair. The public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing members of the public to present any matter pertaining to county business or items on the Board of Commissioners' agenda. Remarks should be addressed directly to the Board of Commissioners and not to staff, the audience, or media. The chairperson shall open the public comment period. Any speaker who wishes to speak shall approach the podium and not speak from his or her seat. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and physical address when he or she approaches the podium. Each citizen shall be allotted three minutes. Citizens will be allowed to yield their time on a specific topic by utilizing one more attendee's time. This would allow no more than six minutes. I will keep with the, with the, up with the time. Uh, we don't. The system up here is broken, so I'll, I'll notify you when there's a minute left, and then I'll notify the chair when the time is up. Um, if you already yield your time or time is yielded to you, then please let the chairperson know in advance. Speakers appearing before the Board of Commissioners will not be allowed to campaign for public office, promote private business ventures, or use language of a personal nature which insults or demeans any person or which, when directed at a public official, is not related to his or her official duties. The Board of Commissioners may accept written comments in lieu of oral statements. Written statements can be delivered to the County Manager's Office. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. That said, uh, we have a listing of uh, sign-ups, and we're starting. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you come forward, state your name, give us your uh, home address. Uh, Clark Erskine, uh, 523 Gold Hill Road, Madison, North Carolina. Uh, my wife and I have reached out to several of you, and we appreciate the ones of you have responded and took the time to speak. Um, as your constituents, we continue to discuss the straight rezoning and look at the possibility of the entertainment district. We remain severely concerned. Uh, we, we, we want you to understand that we're reasonable people. Like our community is a bunch of reasonable people. I'm not saying there's not a wild card in there, but we're reasonable. Um, we're not avoiding progress or development. Um, we know that development is coming in some fashion to our area in 220. Like most of us have looked at, looked at the land plan. We understand that something is coming, but not at the cost of our neighborhood and our children. Rockingham has made many valuable changes over the past eight or 10 years. It's a safe and wonderful place to live and to raise children. We've seen steady growth and change. It's been great. You guys have done a good job. The community has done a great job. The citizens have done a good job. The businesses have done a good job because it's matched the lifestyles of the people in Rockingham County. I'm proud to be from Rockingham County. If development is coming, it must be at the right location. 
If growth is coming, it must be done in the right way with the right growth. If changes are coming, it must be at the right time. If development is coming, it must be done with transparency. If growth is coming, there can be balance and true community input. This is our chance to get it right. This is your chance to show true leadership because our children's lives depend on it. A straight rezone is not responsible or reasonable. And to be honest, it's not in agreement with the Rockingham County Land Use Plan. Is a non-conditional commercial property, a high density business, a high impact development, or an entertainment district truly compatible with the parameters of our land use plan? Is it truly compatible? Especially since it's surrounded by multiple residential neighborhoods, camp care free, and an elementary school where my children go, literally as the crow flies. One minute. Less than, less than two miles away. Especially since it's surrounded by these neighborhoods. The things that are required to examine when considering a rezone, you must consider these things. We are requesting that you deny straight rezoning for this property on August 21st. What is the rush if we really want to get it done the right way? Let's not put the cart before the horse. I think the planning board noticed this need when they voted five to two to not recommend this rezoning. So let's trust the experts. Let's use our economic development director to find locations for more, more suitable that will lessen the negative impacts that this will present. Rezoning is an immediate need. The community has expressed the many detrimental facets of this development. Is this the best location for the development? Is there a better way? If you rush this, what things could happen? If you rush this, do we get it right? Let's don't rush it. You must deny the straight rezoning from your reasonable voting constituents. Thank you, Mr. Erskine. Mr. Easley, Tory Easley, yet another familiar face. Hello, I'm Tory Easler. My address is 101 South 8th Avenue, Mayadan, North Carolina. Okay. Tory, I apologize for calling you Easley. When okay. I, and I need some uh, penmanship lessons, but I'm not coming to you to get them, okay? That's exactly <laughs> right. That's why I type everything. All right. I came to Rockingham County in 2008. Um, I'm a pastor, and I, I have enjoyed living in Rockingham County. came from Forsyth County, and um, I like the way Rockingham County does things uh, on many different levels. I have a deep appreciation also for our county commissioners. Um, I know some of you, some of you more by acquaintance and some of you a little bit better. Uh, I currently pastor Mayadan First Baptist Church in Mayadan. I believe the Bible gives us precepts and also principles, uh, not only for how to have a relationship with Jesus, how to have uh, an eternity with him, but also for how we should live and conduct ourselves. Um, and also how we should honor God, and then things, if we follow the Bible, it teaches us how we can uh, benefit ourselves, benefit our neighbors, and to live a peaceful uh, life. Uh, Peter remarks in John 6 that Jesus had the words of life. Now, I know there's not a direct verse uh, in the Bible that says that we should not gamble. And I know we're talking about a rezoning thing for the possible building of a casino. Um, but there are many principles in the Bible that tell us that. I'll give you two. 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 and 12. Even while we were with you, uh, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work and earn their own living. 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people have craving money, have wandered from the true faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. CNN published an article on September 24, 2013, uh, about the harm that casinos do. One minute. I want to give you one story myself from my own experience. I won't give you the quotes of that. 
I got a call one day from a young man. I was early in the ministry. His name was Jason. Jason came home from senior in high school. His mom had sold everything that they had because she had a gambling addiction. And I know that if we don't build a casino here in Rockingham County, if we do, that doesn't mean that people won't have a gambling addiction. But I think we're enabling that. And I think we're bringing harm to our community. And one thing I would say, I spend a lot of my time ministering to people in pain and others that are in pain for their loved ones because they have struggles in their life. And I'm afraid if you go through with this, it's going to make my job a lot more difficult and other pastors' jobs a lot more difficult because of the lifestyle that comes with this. And so I want to ask you respectfully to consider those things while you're making this decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Easler. Mr. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, 200 Cedar Drive, Stoneville, North Carolina. Maybe wondering why I put this hard hat on. It's because it represents the hard work of a man to earn his money. Tori has uh, already read the verse that stinking thief stole my verse. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, the Berean Bible standard says. By craving it, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced them through with sorrows. Your job is not to bring money into our county. Your job is to be like this hard hat, to be a protector. To be a protector. I'm going to ask people. folks to retain your comments. Mr. Johnson, please continue. To be a protector of your constituents and to listen to your constituents, I'm asking three things of you tonight. Number one, that you would schedule a special meeting to hear from the com community. Let them come and speak their mind to you. Number two, I'm asking you, when you listen to them, understand that this isn't your decision. I've talked to two of you, and I told two of you that I was going to do, if you vote this through, I will do everything I can do. To, I voted you in office, and I voted that Republican that's doing all this dancing around to get this Gambling. I, I voted you in office. I've never been a political man, but I am putting the hard hat on tonight that if you vote this through, I will try to find men that are better than you. And I hope you, you are the best men in the position. And I, I believe that you are. I've always believed that. But I will do everything in my power to find men to replace you. And I will go against you because I believe that this is an evil that is going to have a detrimental effect upon our county. And again, it's not about money. Love of money is root of all evil. I want to teach you one thing. I said to myself, I'm a preacher. I studied the Bible. I said, that can't apply to Adam and Eve. There's no way. They didn't have money. One minute. What was transacted between the Creator and Adam and Eve? It was truth. That was the most valuable commodity in their time. And you know what they did? They traded out the truth of God for a lie of the devil. And the devil said, you can be just like God. Why, just eat this? He said, don't do that, but he's withholding something from you. Let me tell you what. You will do nothing but bless this county if you withhold this zoning from this casino. Thank you for your time, and I'm praying thank, for you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Sheriff Sam Page. Good evening. My name is Sam Page, Sheriff of Rockingham County. My address is 424 Dogwood Drive, Eden, NC. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come before you tonight. I'm going to be brief. You probably don't hear many brief statements from me, but I'm going to be brief. I'm going to ask you to do a few things. I come here on behalf of public safety protecting the citizens. The first responsibility of government is public safety and protecting the citizens. I serve 92,000 people. How many people can say they got that many bosses? You have them also. Tonight, there's a lot of people here, but there's a lot of interest in your decisions. I ask you to be transparent, truthful, and upfront in your decisions here because there's a lot of conversation going around that gives me concern. 
as a sheriff, and I've investigated a lot of cases, but I'll tell you this, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna hope you're gonna to listen to the people. Remember, we're a government of, for, by the people. Let's listen to their voice. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Mr. Brandon Liebrick. Brandon, if uh, you composed your comments to me on by email, you're very articulate, or did Mrs. Liebrick do that by any chance? <laughs> well, she, she is an English major, so she, uh, she's always, she's rubbing off on me, I guess. It was better than legible. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, Brandon Liebrick, 381 Carefree Lane, Stokesdale, North Carolina. Uh, and I'm, I want to offer some general comments regarding the rezoning process that this county is employing. You know, our population in our county has been stagnant, if not declining, over time. And my understanding is we have efforts underway to try to bring people and businesses to this county, both for revenue purposes and for the betterment of our, of our county. If we are to do that, we have to do a good job. We have to do a good job. Do you think anyone in their right mind would be interested in moving to a county that can't be transparent and cannot take the interest of its own citizens into account when making decisions. I think it's very important we do this the right way and that includes a number of things on the rezoning side. Now, now I am an attorney, but I'm not a land use attorney. But I can tell you, and, and you can feel free to speak to your experts, most counties, most municipalities that experience growth, the kind of growth that we expect and want to see, have things in place they require, for example, conditional zonings that, that, that make sure that the vision that the county has set forth actually gets met. I mean, we have a good vision. Let me read, for, for example, out of the Highway Commercial District. It says the district regulations are designed to protect and encourage the transitional character of the districts by permitting uses and building forms that are compatible with the surrounding area. That, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, recognizing that a large part of the county is going to go from residential agriculture to perhaps highway commercial, to large-scale residential developments. In order for that vision to be fulfilled, though, there has to be conditional zoning. There has to be standards that developers are held to. The other thing here that I want to point out is the need for public input. That's already been mentioned several times, so I won't, I won't repeat uh, unnecessarily. But ask yourself, how many planning board members, just planning board, which they did vote down five to two, the rezoning coming up next on the 21st, but my comments are beyond that. They're, they're broader than that. How many planning board members are from and live in the high impact areas One that minute. you're making decisions on? How many, how many work groups have you created when you're developing the UDO and creating the comprehensive plan? How many people are invited to join those work groups than from these impacted areas? All we're asking for is our verse, voices to be heard. And, and we ask that there be consideration. We ask, you know, I, would, I would ask that there be a moratorium on rezonings of a significant size for a period of time until a UDO is reviewed by a work group that includes citizens, again, that are actually impacted by the decisions being made. In inclusion, again, we deserve our voices to be heard and we ask that you do so. Thank you, Mr. Liebrich. Uh, Doug Isley. Good evening, gentlemen. Doug Isley, 1790 Flat Rock Road, Reedsville, North Carolina. Lifetime resident, Rockingham County. A lot of good points have been made by my friends and my neighbors, new friends. Uh, Funny thing, the one thing that seems to be tying all of them together is faith and their commitment to their community and keeping a beautiful community, keeping this home. And it seems like that there's a lot going on, like they say, behind the scenes that doesn't show a lot of transparency. Now, I've talked to a few board members, um, some we've had good conversations with, some we bump a little head, but we still had a good conversation. Um, the folks here want input. This is their home, and you represent them, and you should hear them. As the sheriff said, 92,000 residents roughly in Rockingham County. There's 62,000 voters, all affiliations. 
I shook hands with a Democrat the other night. And it was somebody that we've not seen eye to eye on things before, but we came together on this because it means something to us and it gets to the root. It's our community. It's just not politics. This is our way of life. This is where we live. This is where we raise our families. This is where we have our grandchildren. And I compel you to please see past the politics. Don't listen to Raleigh. Don't listen to favors. Don't listen to deep pockets. Listen to the people. And I'll remind a, a, a couple of you, we've talked from a faith standpoint. Forget everything else. Forget the voters. Forget the 92,000 uh, people in Rockingham County. One minute. Forget the Facebook post. But we'll remember, if you believe in God and you come before him, and we all will meet our maker one day because we're all appointed once to die, you've got to stand before God. You can argue with the folks in the county on the phone or discuss with the folks in the county on the phone, what if, what if, I can't, I can't. But when you stand before God, are you going to argue with him? That's, that's where it gets to right there. You need to keep your focus on who you finally got to answer to in the end because that's really all that matters. Thank you, gentlemen. I think I've got this right, Ms. Rhonda Rutledge. Rhonda from Carefree. Nice to see you. Yes, sir. I'm Rhonda Redenbow, and I live at 171 Carefree Lane in Stokesdale. And I have not spoken to any of you directly. I've been pretty busy speaking to everybody else with many, many questions. But I come to you tonight on behalf of both Camp Carefree and the citizens that live around Camp Carefree. The proposal that's been made to you is to rezone over 192 acres as highway commercial. When I look at our GIS and I look at the people who live in our community, this is well beyond any standard of anywhere around us. And I'm not sure that there's one in Rockingham County that's been developed this way. When you work with subdivisions, you make them present plans. You make them give you proposals. But on this massive endeavor, you're taking their word for it. There's been many people who've relayed various things to me that you've said. And I will tell you, Camp Carefree is not underfunded. Camp Carefree is not going downhill. The people in this community and many places around us have worked hard to maintain Camp Carefree and to help it to grow. We went from 50 campers in 1986 to over 600 now. Our numbers have been a little bit down by COVID, but so has everybody else's. I asked you that when you consider this rezoning, you consider the people that live in that neighborhood, the people that have bought land and bought houses and bought farms in that neighborhood and the surrounding communities, the people in Madison who have businesses. Downtown Madison is flourishing. When the people go and gamble their money away, they're not coming to downtown Madison anymore. They're not going to Summerfield. They're not going to Oak Ridge. They're going home with no food for their families, with no way to do the things that they need to do to protect themselves. We're begging you to please slow this down. Use some consideration. It does not appear that it's within the UDO, and we can twist it around however we want to. But the UDO is supposed to be in place to protect us, not to undo the hard work of the many, many citizens of this county. Thank you. Mr. Chris Rodenbaugh. Thank you for almost getting the last name. My name is Chiz Rodenbow, and I live at 171 Carefree Lane. I'm the second half of the leader here, Rhonda Rodenbow. <laughs> I, I have lived at Camp Carefree since the first summer of the camp. 
I've said that before. But I want to start tonight by just saying that uh, I'm not a pastor. I can quote scripture. I can tell you all the ills of gambling. But those aren't the people we need to reach right now. We need to reach the people on the other side who think we're going to get something for nothing. And you know why they think that? They heard it from you. I, 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 will, I will quote something that I, that I pulled off the Internet this morning, which said, I want to give the people accurate information, which means they think that people don't have the information they need. But the information they're getting says that they're going to get so much more money for their tax dollar that, uh, that they're going to uh, have a, an income from this gambling of 22.5%. Uh, and that it's, uh, it's going to be a free ride. I don't know where they think the money comes from, but I see a different side of that story because I also read the draft of the bill that is uh, the father of one of these members who was put before Raleigh, and I read it this, uh, today as well. And it says that uh, the conditions of this thing have to be that the uh, county has to be less than 100,000 citizens. This one's 92. Sam Page just told you that. So that's one of the conditions. Not from you. That's something that's come from probably the people that uh, lobbied in Raleigh, the people who are putting this here and want to put it here. And we all know it. And we, we just want a, a, a chance to say that we see what's going on, and we want something to be done. The other thing that's being said about it is that... Uh, One minute. <clears throat> okay, the other thing is that uh, uh, it's going to bring all this income. Uh, there'll be $5 million. Uh, there'll be 100, uh, 1,750 employees. Uh, and if you read the proposed draft of this bill, uh, it, it goes specifically to who the employees will be. Uh, and it excludes things like contracted workers. But it doesn't include people who uh, don't have the right immigration status. I mean, read the bill, or read the proposed draft, I should say. But it's where all this is coming from. It's not just the 100,000 acres. I mean, 100,000 people, it's also the size of the property. The property has to be a minimum of 100 acres. And this is 192 acres. As my wife said and others have said, it's never been done before. And it won't be done now except for what you're trying to do to us by pushing this through. And it's coming from Raleigh. And we didn't get a say in it. And we just want to be heard. Thank you. Josh Branch. Good evening. Joshua Branch, 195 Benjamin Road, Eden, North Carolina. <clears throat> uh, I'm not very eloquent. I don't speak in front of a lot of people very often. I'd like to start just by reading a Bible verse. Um, Proverbs 13, 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. I appreciate the man that was up here that put on his hard hat uh, to represent all the hard work that goes on in Rockingham County. I've, um, uh, I've lived here for the past seven years, and um, I'm from Florida, and things down there were a little bit bigger, and I really appreciate uh, the, the, the town and the, the county of Rockingham and how uh, the people just love what they do and how everyone around here is, uh, excuse me, not as eloquent as the, the gentleman before me. <clears throat> Another Bible verse I like to quote is, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Uh, Mr. Uh, Liebrich, I, name is, I believe his name was before me, said that we were worried about uh, people leaving and things getting smaller and smaller. Well, the Bible says right here, if we turn from our wicked ways and humble ourselves and pray, then will he hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land. I ask you, which wicked way is this going to help? Which wicked way is this going to help us turn from? 
Uh, I'm a first responder in a large city, and that should be enough, but I see what kind of lifestyle, what kind of result this lifestyle can bring, the, the, the wickedness and, and the, the gunshots and the people harmed and the robberies. I, can, I see this on a regular basis, and bringing that from the big city here is not going to help us out at all. As I, as I said, I'm not very eloquent. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say, and I'm very nervous, but I ask you and the people that are, are making these decisions, when the Bible says, if we seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, if, if putting this through, passing it, rezoning, and all, pushing all this through, which one of those wicked ways is going to help us turn from as a county? And the answer is going to be zero, if you ask yourself and you're honest about it. So whenever God's people, which I, have seen, I believe there are plenty of them here tonight, have gotten together and prayed for something, and the leaders of a nation throughout history have decided to go another way. We all know that it's never been great, it's never been anything good, but when, as we see in the starting of this country, when we all get together behind the Lord's will and we do what he says and we s submit to the Lord's will and we get the evilness and wickedness out of our country, he will bless us and help us prosper. Thank you. Thank you, God. I think you did a good job, Josh, and I appreciate that you didn't provide any codicils to the New Testament uh, in the process. Thank you very much. Uh, that completes public comment, and uh, we're moving on to Mr. Ronnie Tate, Item 7, Director of Engineering and Public Utilities for Rockingham County. Sorry. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I have an item tonight uh, for your consideration. And it's uh, for approval of an AIA wastewater asset inventory and, and assessment grant. It's D project number AIA W-0243. The grant's for 150000 This will help the county uh, evaluate our current and future wastewater needs. Um, the county does have a portion to pay for this grant. It's uh, $2,250. And if you uh, choose to approve it, I request that you approve the budget revision, the funding offer and acceptance, and the board resolution for the project. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Question, gentlemen? Hearing none, do we have a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the submitted buz budget revision, funding offer and acceptance, and the board resolution for the project. Motion made. Second. And seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. And we've got a couple of items of new business. Uh, first one of which is right all right. Mr. Counselor. No, no Felissa, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, Ms. Felissa Farrell. Mrs. Farrell, how nice to see you tonight. This is the bad news associated with the Medicare expansion, right? Now it's not bad news. But we're going to have to pay more money. Please go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for having me tonight. I appreciate you putting this ma uh, matter on the agenda. Um, I come to you requesting that we add three positions for Medicaid expansion. These would be income maintenance positions. Um, on July 26, our county was contacted along with the other counties, along with the county managers, concerning that they were going to be moving forward with Medicaid expansion. Um, the anticipated start date is October 1st of 2023. Um, so at this point, we are going to be starting to do those public notices to the beneficiaries who may be qualifying. Um, we, during the budget process, we did want to add those positions in, but county administration, when we were talking about the budget, decided we should wait to make sure that Medicaid expansion was going to be moving forward. So we did get that confirmation. So now we're going to go ahead and request those positions. It will take us a little bit of time to hire those folks and then get them trained, but I think now is a good time to start doing that. 
our initial estimates for our county concerning the number of folks that are probably going to be included in the expansion is 4,300 enrollees in the first year, and then in the second year, an additional 1,250 for around 5,500 um, souls that will be added. Now, this is just an estimate. It could be more, it could be less, but it's just an estimate. Do you have any questions? Mr. Chair, uh, how many uh, citizens do we currently have enrolled? Uh, when I checked last week, we had 29,830-ish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other question? Uh, I, I've got one for you. Uh, I assume this action that you're considering is based upon Secretary Kingsley, Kingsley's uh, intent to move forward with the necessaries associated with Medicare expansion. Is that correct? The announcement did come from the Secretary's Office for Medicaid Expansion, yes, sir. Right, so my question is, if expansion does not occur, what are we, what are, are we gonna kick these three folks out? Um, it is not my understanding. I think it is gonna be moving forward. Um, it could be possibly delayed. Um, the latest start date that we were told on that meeting was December 1st, but by everything that was explained to us on that July 26 uh, meeting that the proposed date of October 1st does look likely. Thank you. Sure. Sounds very reasonable to me. It's what we call betting on the come. The All other, right. The other component of that is that you're getting, most of that is covered by federal funds, so. Yes, we know. Okay. Uh, and just for the general public's knowledge, uh, when it's fully implemented, how many extra folks will we have to have? It will be around, are you talking about number of beneficiaries staff, added to Medicaid staff. for total Medicaid? We're, we're getting three now. How many will we eventually have to have? So what we did was we converted two positions in the budget um, so that we could minimize the number of new positions. And then these three, hopefully that will suffice. Um, it'll be, like I said, it'll depend on how many new members or new enrollees we have. So I will probably be able to give you a better idea maybe next year. Okay, well, I understand that, but okay. in essence, it's gonna take us around five extra folks to deal with the expansion. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> it's, it's part of doing business and uh, we welcome the benefits to those folks that are going to be made eligible. Mr. Uh, Chair, I have a question. Sure. Um, in conjunction with this proposal, should we approve it? Is there a budget amendment that needs to be attached with this as well? It looks like $130,074 are coming from the state, maybe, and $45,408 that the taxpayers in Rockingham County will have to pay? So yes, you will have to do a budget amendment. That money should be coming through when the state budget is passed. So some of that will be included in that. So So let me ask our manager, do we need to include that budget amendment as yes. part of this agreement? Yes. Okay. Further questions from the commissioners? Thank you, Phyllis. I, I, most of those questions were for the benefit of the public. So understand. you understand that? Yes, sir. Do we have a motion? So moved. Uh, with the necessary budget amendments. Yes. Motion made? Second. Seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by the sound of aye. 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 Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. And Happy we look evening. we look forward to this. I hope you get some really good people. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have another issue that was added under new business. Ronnie Tate. Gentlemen, uh, as Felissa said, thank you for uh, letting me allow or allow me to add this to the agenda tonight. Um, part of the reason for that is um, so we've all seen cost increases across the, the country and uh, especially right now petroleum projects are going up and this is a petroleum project here. So I'm asking uh, tonight for you to consider approving uh, the repaving of the Board of Election parking lot and seal coating the Justice Center parking lot. Uh, low bid for the project uh, was from 
triangle grading and paving. Uh, their amount for low bid was $224,964. I've added contingency of $11,248, making the total request tonight $236,212. And I would add too, uh, that you approve for the county manager to make uh, or approve change orders up to $50,000 without board approval, as you've done in the past. I'll be glad to answer any questions. And Ronnie, I think both of these were below, combined below, I think it was 274 that yep. we had. Yes, sir. That was the but, uh, in the budget. Yes. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Well, that, that's what I wanted to be sure to, to mention. You just said it was that this money's already been allocated in our budget. Yes, it's sir. It's in, it's in the current budget. Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. Further questions? Here, none. We would accept a motion for or against. Mr. Chair. I make a motion to approve the Board of Elections repaving and Justice Center parking lot ceiling by triangle grading and paving as the contractor of, for this project. Contract amount uh, of $224,964 plus 5% contingency of 11248 for a total of 236212 and allow the county manager to approve change orders up to 50000 without board approval. Motion made. And seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by the sound of aye. 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 Those Thank you, gentlemen. By Thank you. Mr. County Manager or Mr. Counselor, do we have further business that we need to address this evening? Yes, sir. That's it. Uh, it's time for Commissioner comments, and when, tonight we will start with the Commissioner Houston Barrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to make the public uh, aware of some upcoming events in the county. Uh, we have High school football season starting up Friday, uh, August the 18th. High school football season's first game will be going, so make sure you go out to your local high school and uh, support them. Uh, on August the 19th, which is Saturday, um, Egg Track Mines concert will be at the uh, Market Square in Riesel at 7 p.m. And on Saturday, August the 26th, uh, here in Eden, there's a 5.30 music <laughs> cruise in uh, and Jeep meeting down at Freedom Park. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Berger. Thank you. I just want to thank Nora Thacker uh, for uh, what she is doing on behalf of the county and also a big thank you to Miss Julie Tauber. Uh, Julie is the director of the Boys and Girls Club and what you see from Nora Thacker is uh, the work that uh, all the volunteers and all the employees of the Boys and Girls Club put into the youth of this community. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Eden has touched many lives here in this community. So thank you to both of them. And uh, Nora, you, um, I know you'll make us proud as you continue on. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Powell? Yes, this past Saturday, the Hunting Advisory Committee, we hosted a float down the river. We started at Madison River Park and uh, went down to the 704 Bridge uh, for the kids uh, in grades four through 10, we had some younger uh, and several volunteers. Went really well and I'd like to thank the Hunting Advisory Committee for their participation in this. Rockingham County EMS, the Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, uh, Lindsey Pegg with Rockingham County Tourism, uh, Rebecca Pigram as the Public Information Officer for the county. Both of those ladies did a tremendous job helping us put this together. Madison City Police Department and the Fire Department. Rescue Squad uh, and Emergency Management was able to bring out their drone, uh, their drone and get some footage of the kids going up and down the river there. So you'll see that Allen County's website before too much longer. And then uh, North Carolina Wildlife, which uh, helped us tremendously. So we uh, appreciate the involvement of these people in the community. We appreciate those of you, if, you, if someone's here that allowed your child to go down the river, uh, it's an opportunity to get them out in the, in the wild and let them enjoy the natural uh, rivers and beauty of our county. And we thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Powell. Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to recognize the uh, local elected officials who are in our audience tonight. Appreciate Sam Page being here, our sheriff. i also like to recognize Paula Rakestraw, member of our school board. Thank you for being here tonight. I also recognize Tommy Underwood from Eden City Council. Thank you for letting us be in your house tonight as well as Clint Simpson, Assistant City Manager. While not elected, we do appreciate you. And um, echoing, 
uh, Commissioner Powell. I'd like to thank Ms. Thacker for being here tonight. She's going to make her way to Raleigh next week representing our community. So we do appreciate that. We appreciate her service to the community. And lastly, I'd like to thank the residents tonight for coming, voicing your opinion through signs, through public comment, and private discussions. So that, that's a right that you have as an American citizen. God bless the USA. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Hall. Uh, first thing, I, I also want to thank uh, Town of Eden and all the personnel here. Mr. City Manager, that was uh, really done well, and I hope you will relay our thanks to all personnel involved and to making this. Um, you know, your, your commissioners are in charge of change, and sometimes we don't know what's coming, and uh, there's a change coming up. Uh, and the changes are being instigated by increases in population, increases in cost of goods, and we're going to do our best to deal with that. You know, we haven't raised taxes or the rate of taxation in this county in 14 years, but it looks like, based on the figures we're looking at and the cost we anticipate, that may not be so. So we're very interested in that, and we can understand how you're going to be interested in that, and we'll do our best to relay the sort of changes that come out and to rely, I forget who spoke of it, but asking for accurate uh, information. And we're gonna do our best to make sure. And I heard some really good advice during public comment about read the bill. Uh, because the thing that you're most interested in uh, is in the bill. Uh, it's, it's not here within the county zoning ordinance. So please look at that. A couple of general information ideas or points you might be interested in. Uh, for those of you that wish to vote and do not have a photo ID, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but your local board of elections should be able to provide you before election day now <laughs> with a photo ID. So anybody that here or that you know that needs a photo ID and can't come up with uh, if you're like me, getting on the schedule over to driver's license place, you can go get a valid photo ID at the Board of Election. Um, I got a question for uh, our engineer, and that's the status of the, you let a bid a couple weeks ago for the new sewer line. When does that work and start? Okay, so if you see digging out along 220, it's not associated with anything that you talked about tonight. It's associated with a, a sewer line. And finally, this is a personal thing. Uh, well, not finally, but next to finally. Uh, be wary of ticks. The little critters that used to stay on dogs, but are on deer, and they will be on you. My wife suffers from an allergy because of something called the Lone Star Tick, and I've run into several other people. So be cautious, and uh, Camp Carefree, I know that you're checking these children closely because uh, it's really a problem, and uh, we know several people with Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Lyme's disease, so they're kind of insidious health hazards to our county. And finally, I want to thank you as a group. Uh, I know there's a lot of emotion out there, and there's a lot of information that may or may not be right, but you feel strongly about it, and that's why we thank you for being here. But I want to thank you for conducting yourself in a very civil manner and presenting your arguments in a way that they could be understood without stepping on your colleagues. So with that said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. Seconded. Discussion here, none. All in favor indicate by the sound of aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. We stand adjourned until the 21st of August.